what's up good people welcome to my youtube channel it's your girl the african tigress again with another amazing video in case you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe tap the bell for notifications so that you can always be notified whenever i'm posting a new video so today i'm joined with a very amazing brother here and i think it's about it's fair if you could start we could start by him introducing himself so hi <laughs> hello this is uh ty nichols we're africa investment guy and i finally got a chance to meet the uh <laughs> african tigers <laughs> so ty where are you from uh, i came from tampa florida okay and so what do you do and why are you in kenya okay i'm in, in kenya uh, checking things out because i own a company like i said it's called africa investment guide and so i do a lot of investments in africa and i'm getting trying to get other people in the diaspora to do investments in Africa as well. Mm -hmm. Is it your first time here? It's not my first time to Africa. I've been to Africa several times, but this is my first time in Kenya. Uh, which countries have you so far visited in Africa? I've been to Ghana, Togo, and Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been there back and forth several times. I even own land in Togo. Wow. Yeah. That's 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 and, quite uh, interesting. And also a business too. So you own land and a business in Togo. Yes. How was the process? Like how easy was it to own land there? Well, it's, it's very simple. That's why I try to get people to invest money there because they don't really realize how simple it is compared to starting a business in the states. Mm -hmm. So it's it's simple, and what we do is we teach people how to do it. So it's a simple process. So if somebody wanted to own land in Togo or, okay, let me just make it simple. Which countries are you helping people to invest in? Oh, they can invest in any country. I mean, I'm willing to go anywhere and help them to get started. But like I said, my main focus in the beginning anyway was Ghana and Togo, but now I'm working on East Africa. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to buy, for instance, if I was from the diaspora and I wanted to buy land in Togo, uh, what would I need to do? Well, we have several different programs. We have one program, it's even listed on our website, where you can get uh, real estate for as low as 2500 And what we do is we, uh, we combine people, like, finances together so they can buy, like, a, a home in Togo. And then if they decide later on they want to sell it, we just divide those uh, pieces up and sell it. Mm -hmm. And then we have another way where you can just buy it straight out. Like if you had the cash, you just buy it completely. You don't mm -hmm. have to depend on other people, you know, to put your money together. But those are people that have a, you know, a higher budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in Kenya, uh, do you, have you already started getting people to invest here? Or have you started investing in Kenya yourself? Not yet. Right now, just that's why I'm here now is just to check things out, check mm -hmm. out the economy, see how things are running, see, you know, the laws are you have here and, mm -hmm. you know, just to pick things up and, you know, take it from there. So what your, what were your first impressions when you got to Kenya? How was it for keeping in mind that you've only been to West Africa? So mm -hmm. Kenya is your first East African country you're visiting. So what are your first impressions about Kenya? Oh, I like the city. It's big, it's nice, the people are friendly, but you gotta watch yourself because the the taxi driver he just took me for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he um, asked him to take me to the Westlands, but instead he took me to some other part of town that was just crazy. And we were just driving around all night, and it was. Talk huh? up. You you're speaking low. Oh, I was just saying that we were driving around all night. He took me to like this uh, hotel in the hood where I told him not to go. <laughs> And so how long are you going to be in Kenya? I came here for 10 days. 10 days? Yeah. So are you going to be exploring other places in Kenya just besides Nairobi? Uh, yes, tomorrow morning I'm leaving on a 6 a.m. flight to Mombasa mm -hmm. to spend time on the coast and also to explore over there, see what they have to offer. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Then you'll come back to Nairobi again and then Yes, back. then I'll come back to Nairobi for a couple more days and then I head back to the States. Mm -hmm. So how are the business prospects so far? Like, of course, you've interacted with people and probably seen a couple of things one on two. How do you feel? Do you feel like it's a nice place to invest in? Oh, most definitely. I can't wait to get started. I think uh, Nairobi as well as Mombasa, even before I've been 
before I even get there, I'm quite sure that they have a, hope to have a lot to offer because it's, it's a big country and it has a, a large population. So I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of opportunities available. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say you run a company known as? AfricaInvestmentGuide.com AfricaInvestmentGuide.com When did you start the company and why did you start the company? Well, technically, we started 10 years ago. It was me and another guy, but we, you know, we separated and I changed the company's name like uh, less than a year ago. And so now I'm going it alone. And the reason why I started it is because, like I said before, I think people don't realize the uh, investment opportunities that's available in Africa. Mm -hmm. So how's, how's been business so far since you rebranded? Are people getting on board? Are people like investing through your company? Oh yes, definitely. Like I said, I've done uh, a couple of trips, but they've all been to Ghana and I've even did like a couple of tours to, to Ghana, Togo. And I want to do a couple to Senegal and the Gambia because I've been hearing a lot of good things about the Gambia. So I'm gonna try to pick it up and take some people over there as well. Mm -hmm. So is it, to, is it that you organize trips for people to visit the places or is it about investment or is it trips, investment trips? Well, it's, it's a little bit of both. We bring them over like for a vacation, but at the same time we do uh, business meetings, we do tours of the country, we get people, you know, acclimated to, you know, Africa and see if they like it or not. I mean, whatever they want, we can arrange it. How do you plan yourself? Do you plan to like really move to Africa, any country in Africa, for instance? Well, of course. That's why we bought land in Togo. <laughs> oh, so in short, you're moving to Togo. <laughs> either there or Ghana, one or the other. Because huh? I say either there or Ghana, one or the other. I like both of them. Oh, well, you've not experienced East Africa yet. You just came here. <laughs> this is your first time in East Africa. Probably you're going to love it here as well. I'm quite sure I will. This is nice, you know. Mm -hmm. if, if my uh, income is high enough, who knows, I might get both places. Oh, yeah. You can, <laughs> you can actually get East, West, South, Central. You can get, you know, you can get wherever you want to be. Definitely. So we'll see, you know, what the future holds. Mm -hmm. I would like to have one on both both coasts. That would be nice, the mm -hmm. East Coast and West Coast. So uh, I've interacted with a number of African Americans, and I do get people who have uh, different opinions. Uh, some say like, "Oh, we can't come to Africa." I've had such people who are telling me like, "Oh, we cannot come to Africa because oh, you people sold us," or some people say, "Oh, all you want is just our money." What's your take about that? I say that they should come and check it out for themselves. You can't go by what other people say. A lot of people say this and that, but they never even been here. So how can you give somebody an opinion about something that you know nothing about? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to come here. You got to be around the people. You got to do things. And I like it here. You know, like I said, I've been here multiple times and the people treat me great. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem, never. You never had a problem coming not, here? Not no serious problem. No serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, of course, you know, people, they're going to raise you know, raise the prices and stuff like that. But they always do that no matter where you go. I mean, I can go <laughs> to Dominican Republic, they'll raise the prices. I go to Brazil, they'll raise the prices. So no matter where you go as an American, they're gonna raise the price. Yeah, especially when once people know your accent, it's not just it's not just American. Same to me. I would visit some places once they realize I'm not from that country. They're going to raise the prices. prices. Yeah, yeah, so it's oh, just yeah. something that happens. Oh, we got one coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because once people, some people believe that uh, if you're traveling and you've been able to go to different countries or you're in their country, you have money to spend. You are a tourist. Nobody cares. Maybe you're just like really living or m traveling on a budget. People. Mm -hmm. Like they just believe as long as you're a tourist, you have money. Yeah, it's field day. Yeah, like, so come <laughs> come right this way, you know. <laughs> the best price, best price. Uh, it'd be the highest price. <laughs> Let me just add a little extra to it. <laughs> but but overall, though, I like it. You know, I haven't had experienced any problems whatsoever. So uh -huh. you know, like I said, I've been coming back and forth for like ten years. Oh, so for ten years we've been. Mm -hmm. And when did you buy land in, in Togo? I uh, bought land about, I'd say about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even that, the, uh, the value of that has went up so much mm -hmm. since the time I bought it. It's, it's way more than, than quadrupled. You know, so real estate is real good in Africa. You know, you like to say you can buy something small, simple, something yeah. simple, mm -hmm. and a couple years later, it's worth thousands more than what you paid for for sure that's when me even me being an african for sure i know you could buy a, you could buy land right now for instance for one million kenyan shillings 
two three years down the line you can even sell it at 10 million mm -hmm. or sometimes you will not even want to sell it because you realize like the potential of the other place has is quite high mm -hmm. because some people would even ask to pay you like th triple three times the amount that you bought as, yeah, as a matter of fact the land that we bought it, they happened to uh, build a hotel right next to it mm -hmm. so of course our value is just going up you know? exactly and then on top of that we only like less than a quarter of a mile from the beach mm. so it's a, it's a great location for sure which which lome yeah lome. is it in lome mm -hmm. like that's the capital yes mm -hmm. oh, lome okay. togo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so togo is quite an interesting place uh i think uh for most of us who are in like english speaking countries in africa mm. uh, we mostly know a lot about other anglophone countries in Africa yes. and sometimes a little about the francophone countries. Mm. I think Togo is francophone, right? Yes, it is. You speak some French? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do business there? How are you able to interact well, there? <laughs> I mean, most of the people that's, that's in uh, the places that I need to go, like the business places, they speak English as well. Uh -huh. So it's not like I need somebody to translate because they already speak English. Mm -hmm. And what has been your highlight uh, visiting t uh, different places in Africa? Like most memorable thing? I think the most memorable thing so far is when I came to Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> when, when, like I was saying, the, the taxi driver, he tried to, you know, pull a fast one on me, but, you know, I wasn't having it. But uh -huh. other than that, you know, <laughs> this was just the most memorable time by far. <laughs> Oh yeah, it happens, you know. <laughs> so, um, for instance, uh, uh, the people who are in the diaspora, uh, African Americans, uh, how much minimum, what's the minimum amount of money that they would need to invest in Africa? Like, so far among the places you visited, of course, I, um, I came, I visited you, I visited your site, and I wanted you to tell me the minimum I would need to acquire property or just investing in Africa. What's the minimum well, amount the least, that someone... The least amount is $50. So that's... 50? Yeah, just $50. 50 or 50,000? No, $50. 50, dollars, 50 US dollars. Because like I was saying before, what we do is we combine people's money and we just put it together to do like a, a project. You know, we, we invest it in real estate. So like say for instance, if we buy a piece of real estate and we sell it, then you would get your money back plus, you know, a percentage of what we sold it for. Oh. So the very least amount is 50, but we recommend a minimum of 100 or more. Oh, okay. So, oh, someone can just contribute the amount of money they yeah, have. Like $50 monthly, oh. not just $50 one time, but monthly. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, it's $50 monthly, monthly for a period of how long? Until they're ready to, to cancel. There's and, no time period. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we, we're constantly combining the money, purchasing real estate, mm -hmm. investing it, and then if we sell the real estate or get a bigger person, uh, piece of real estate, like I said, if they decide to pull out, we'll just give them their cut plus their percentage, and we just keep buying real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, what if somebody just wanted to buy an independent piece of land yeah. so like uh, they don't want to put some money there monthly maybe they have a certain thousands of dollars and they just want to buy like a property like for um you know like no, I understand. that the one that is your own it's not yeah. about percentage well, and all that yes well we do that too but i was just saying for people that's like on a tight budget we yeah. had the 50 dollars but of course if you want to save buy a house for a hundred thousand we do that also you know a hundred thousand you know half a million whatever but we just also had that for people that just want to get started the fifty dollar monthly program okay so how much minimum would i need uh, if i wanted to buy land for instance in togo just for yourself yeah or? just for myself and then i'll figure out like all i want is to buy land mm -hmm. and when i'm ready to or when i have the funds i would construct something on it mm -hmm. so i just want some piece of land in well, that, togo that, that depends on a lot of things it depends on the area how big a piece of land you want so that depends just like anywhere you know if you want a, a piece of land by the beach it's going to cost more if you want a piece of land up in the mountains it's going to be a little bit less so you know the location has to do with the price but you can start off, let's say like five thousand, ah. for, for like a good size piece of land in mm -hmm. Togo. So for Got five thousand, that is how big is it? Fifty by a hundred, or how? How well, big is the piece of land for well, five thousand? Well, for five thousand, I would say it's probably like uh, I would say fifty by fifty. Fifty by fifty. Yes. Okay, so that one fifty by fifty. Yeah. Okay, that one someone can construct at least a house. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, 
and for the beachfront properties well like i said it depends on how close you are to a uh, crowd lome if you like real close then you can expect at least thirty thousand or more but if you like further out into the, the countryside then probably like around ten thousand ten thousand mm -hmm. uh what about this this uh you know they of return ghana has allocated some piece of land for africans americans who want to move there mm -hmm. so why would someone choose to buy land from you as opposed to following up the procedure to getting that piece of land that the government has allocated? Well, uh, for first thing, you got a whole bunch of red tape to go through. <laughs> you know, they, they, nothing that they do is as simple as they make it sound. So you can do it that way because uh, Ethiopia, they've been doing the same thing for years and most people never even heard of it, you know, in Ethiopia. Oh, so, Ethiopia, uh, I, I personally have yeah, never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, first time I'm hearing about it. So in Ethiopia, people can still go and get go through some process and be able to be given some land? Yeah, uh, with, uh, Selassie, I, he set that up. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he set that up, I think, uh, decades ago. Mm -hmm. And like I said, most people never even heard of it. Most people don't know nothing about it. So, and, you know, the government, they have like all kind of programs that they, you know, for the uh, diaspora. But if you don't have the time and money to really invest in it, then you might as well come to somebody like me who can speed up the process because, like I said, we're trying to get as many people as possible to purchase land. Or, like I said, if you want to do it as an individual, we can do that too. But we do it quickly because we're a private business. Mm -hmm. You know, any anytime you use the government, you always got red tape. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you go to a private person, they can get that same job done, you know, mm -hmm. no time. So how long, for instance, uh, how long would it take me uh, to get, uh, if I've paid for this amount, you've told me maybe I need $10,000 to get land in Ghana, mm -hmm. I've paid $10,000, how long would, I, would it take before the land is actually mine? As soon as you pay for it. <laughs> oh, so as, as soon as I've paid for it? As soon as it, you pay for it, it's yours, yes. Yeah. I get the title deed and all the documents instantly? Yeah, exactly, yeah. As soon as, soon, as, soon as that money touches their hand, it's yours. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm saying. There's no red tape. You go through the government, you know, you got to go over here, do this. You got to go over there, do that. You know, they want to see if this is right. They want to know if that's right. And that's that's time consuming. If you just come to someone that's, uh, it don't really have to be me. It could just be anybody that's really dealing with the real estate. Mm -hmm. They can get the process done in a whole lot shorter period of time. Mm hmm okay so the type of land that uh someone is purchasing from you is it on lease or is it freehold no it's freehold freehold i think uh here y'all do lease right uh it depends it depends where you buy we, no we have both we have mm -hmm. both free freehold and lease so it depends on where you buy the property mm -hmm. so sometimes you'll get the property that is on freehold sometimes uh on lease so it depends on, basically in kenya it depends on where you're buying the mm -hmm. property no, and well, well, most of the deals I've done in West Africa, it's once you buy the land, it's yours. That's it, period. Mm -hmm. And then you can hand it down to your children, your grandchildren, just on and on and on. It's, it's no 99-year uh, lease. It's 100% yours. Yeah. From the time, you, like I said, you sign the dotted line and you, put your, you pay your cash, that land is yours. And there's no yearly tax either, like in the States. You know, every, every year in the States, you got to keep paying. You actually never own the land in the States because you're constantly paying taxes on it. I'm actually interested in asking that because I know of land rates and all that, land tax uh, in the states. Even the places that are not in cities, in rural areas, like, I don't know if you call them rural areas. You have rural areas, or do you yeah. call them up country? How do you call them? Well, you can call it rural. Okay, like, so for people who live off far uh, from the cities or maybe like farmers in rural areas, do they still pay tax? Land Every tax? In the United States, everybody pays taxes. You know, uh, not unless you got some special tax exemption property. Everybody pays tax. They don't care if you own the house, if you own the house for one year or if you own it for a hundred years, you still paying tax. You, that's why I say you never actually own land in the states. Because mm -hmm. so to me, it's like a form of leasehold because you constantly, every year, year in year out, you're paying taxes on it. You never stop paying taxes. Oh, okay. As soon as you stop, the government can take it from you. Wow, that's and they'll that's... sell it to somebody else for just the taxes. 
Oh, that's quite interesting because uh, here, depending on where, like, but if you have property in like the city, within the city and all that, like buildings that you've put on or offices you've rented out, mm -hmm. uh, there are some taxes you pay. But if you go to the like rural areas, the villages and all that, there's no tax. Like, mm -hmm. in fact, some in some villages you'll find maybe the people who are staying there are old grandmas and all that. Mm -hmm. How are they go where are they going to get money to pay for that tax? Well, the state, and the, the state don't care. <laughs> you you got to figure that out. And and. <laughs> And that land probably they were given maybe like they inherited yeah. it from their parents yeah. grandparents and all that for hundreds so of years, yeah. yeah so in, in cities they, yes they there are places you pay tax and yeah. in some places no you don't pay land rates if mm -hmm. you don't pay land rates for your ancestral land mm -hmm. yeah well there's no such thing as ancestral <laughs> land in the state <laughs> your ancestral land is in africa yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there you just pay, pay. It's constant, pay, pay, pay. That's it. Uh -huh. You know, that's that's the name of the game, pay, pay, pay. Oh well, maybe yeah. that's why you need to come to ancestral land. Exactly, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody's gonna ask you tax for your ancestral land. You know that. Yes, because it seems like to me that once you own something, it's yours. Like say, for instance, if you buy, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, a pair of shoes, you don't keep paying taxes on that yeah. year in and year out. Uh -huh. So why should you pay taxes on your land? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. They can they can uh, find some other way, you know, to to charge people for things, but not on their land. Once you buy it, it should be yours. Mm -hmm. So, are you planning to come back to any country in Africa? I can't just say Kenya. Are you planning to come back anytime yeah. soon? All the time. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How often do you come every year? Uh, at least uh, I would say three to four times. Three to four times a year. Probably it's gonna be more now that you know. Starting to, yeah, <laughs> to get like to say, the East African crank, market. Yeah, crank it up. And yeah. Like I say, I, since I left my partner, everything is all on me now. So, but I'm trying to build it up, uh -huh. you know, rebuild it. So, mm -hmm. so sorry. No problem. So, <laughs> are you working with some locals, like maybe some Kenyans or when in Togo, some Togolese and all yeah. that? Yeah, that's how I get most of my information. You know, I try to get in touch with, like I said, people that's on the ground, people that live there, people that know the area, the people that know what I should be charged because, of course. Like I said, once I get there, they're gonna to try to jack the price up. Yeah. So I have to get you know in contact with local people. Mm -hmm. They can show me around and show me what the prices should be. Yeah. So basically, all you do is just to show up and don't talk because sometimes when people yeah. would hear the accent, yeah. when people would hear the accent, they would be like, "Oh, that's coming. That's money. <laughs> Your yeah. accent is money." Yeah, because they'll tell you, the, you know, the uh, the guy that lives there, they'll tell him, for example, let's say five thousand dollars, but then I walk in the room. Oh, I made a mistake. It's not five thousand. It's ten. <laughs> you know. Have you had such an experience? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Many times. Oh yeah. So how do you deal with that? I mean, I, I know that you know. I expect it really to tell you the truth because, like I said, not just here in Africa, but anywhere you go, if, if they uh, think they can get more out of you, they're gonna ask for it. Okay. You know, that's that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right. So if people wanted to contact you, maybe they wanna invest in Africa. How and where do they get you? Like I said, they would just go to AfricaInvestmentGuide.com. It has all my information. Mm -hmm. And do you have like a physical office or somewhere in the U.S.? Yep. My office is in uh, Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. Yes. But like I said, all the information is online. Yes, all the information is on my website. Once they go to AfricaInvestmentGuide.com, all of the information is available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll you give me a link. I'll put the link to your website in the description below. So for those people who will be interested in contacting you and knowing more about investing in Africa, they should be able to get in touch with you. Sounds great. All right. Any last word, any parting shots? Yeah, all of y'all out there, y'all need to come to Africa, quit listening to other people and make up your own mind and come out here and visit us. All right. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure hosting you. All right. Thank you, African Tigress. <laughs> do you know any Swahili terms so far? Say that again. Do you, do you know any Swahili terms so far? Should I teach you one? Okay. I know Jumbo. <laughs> okay. Jumbo. <Asante> <laughs> okay. Okay. And Caribou. Yeah, I know Caribou. Caribou. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I'm going to leave a link to his uh, website so that I can be able to contact him in case you want to do business in Africa or invest in Africa. In case you're new to my channel, in case you're not subscribed, kindly subscribe. Confirm that you're 
bell is still on because I need I notice that uh, sometimes YouTube adjusts and makes their like turns of your bell so ensure that your bell is on so that you can get notified whenever I'm posting until next time bye bye Kwaheri say Kwaheri 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 Kwaheri